Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to another section of our Angular Automation with Protractor Types Builder and Cucumber course. And in this section, we'll be talking about continuous integration with Protractor using Jenkins 2.0 and GitLab. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch the previous videos of this course because this course video is going to be a complete continuation of that part. All right, so let's get started. So before starting this particular video, I assume that you already have the following prerequisite knowledge, something like Jenkins already installed in your machine. If not, we'll quickly download the Jenkins and I will tell you how to work with that. And then you need to have a GitLab account already created and the project is pushed into the GitLab's repo because GitLab is something which is not the scope of this particular video. You can use GitLab or GitHub in your case and then you can push the source code there and then you can try to get the code from there. But mostly in your companies, you will be having all these things set up for you. All you have to do is just give the URL and the authentication so that you can start working with it. And then you need to have a good basic knowledge in Jenkins. And again, Jenkins course is already available in another free video course in our Exit Automations course, which is released in Udemy as well as in YouTube. So please go ahead and watch there so that you can have a clear understanding of how to work with Jenkins, like creating a freestyle project or pipeline projects and how to work with the scriptings and shell scriptings of pipeline project and all those stuff. Because those things are something we'll not be discussing in this video, rather, will be straight away using those features of Jenkins. Jenkins 2.0 is a self-contained open source automation server which can be used to automate all sort of tasks related to building, testing, and delivering or deploying a software. So this is the continuous integration system that we're going to be using for our protractor testing as well. And for the source control, we'll be using GitLab. And again, GitLab is a web-based Git repository manager. Don't confuse with GitHub. It's GitLab, so it's completely different. GitHub is currently acquired by Microsoft. So GitLab is a web-based Git repository manager with wikis and issues tracking features using an open source licenses developed by GitLab Sync. So it is basically developed by GitLab, but again, it is not GitLab itself. And it is currently being used by companies like Sony, NASA, Alibaba, and SpaceX. So you know that this company is really, really cool. Configuring GitLab with Jenkins. So to get started with the Jenkins and GitLab, you need to install GitLab plugin in your uh, Git Jenkins itself. So this is the plugin, the GitLab plugin that you need to install within your uh, Jenkins manage Jenkins option so that you can start working with the GitLab plugin. And configuring GitLab is much easier as well. All you have to do is just uh, create a uh, Git connection by giving the GitLab uh, host URL and then you need to create the credential token. So the credential token is something that you can obtain from the token that you can create from the GitLab's uh, UI or the portal. And then you can use that token over here and then you can give some name in here and then you can use that token within your GitLab's configuration so that you can start using it. That's it, that's simple it is. So once you're done with it, then you can start using them. So the freestyle Jelkin project that we're going to create is going to have a Git connection that we just created in the previous slide. And then we're going to configure that with the uh, Git source control uh, plugin. So that this is the gitlab.com slash exit automation slash protractor.git. So this is where my source codes are sitting. And the credential is exactly the same credential that we use to log in the GitLab account. So that's exactly what is there. And then we need to pass the command because we're going to be using Windows operating system. So I'm using the Windows batch command. If you're using Mac operating system, then you need to use the shell scripting command. So I'm just using this call npm install. So that's going to install the npm for me. And then protractor, the protractor path of our uh, config file. So if I give that, it's going to run the test for me. So let's start configuring then and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Edge browser. All right, I'm over here. So I'm just going to download the uh, Jenkins from the jenkins.ca.org. And then uh, you can download the uh, Jenkins var file from here. So I have already downloaded the Jenkins var file and it is sitting in my downloads folder. 
and then I'm going to run that particular uh, uh, Jenkins var file from here. So basically, I need to use the command called uh, Java hyphen jar, and then you can use the uh, Jenkins start var to uh, spin up the Jenkins start var file for you. So I have already uh, started the Jenkins uh, in my machine, and I have did some initial setup like uh, creating a user and then using the secret password uh, to log in again the secret password is something which is sitting uh, in the secrets folder as you can see in here so this is the secrets folder and within this particular folder you can see that it will have the initial admin password so you can use that initial admin password to uh, log in uh, within this particular uh, Jenkins so this is the password that I have so I'm just using the same password for logging in. So uh, once everything is done, your Jenkins will be up and running. So I have already did them. So I assume that you already have those knowledge. Uh, so that easy it is. So localhost 8080, that's the port number for our Jenkins, which is currently running. So once I uh, open that, you can see that it is gonna uh, run that for us. So there you go. So I'm just going to enter the admin as the username and the secret password that I'm going to enter in. And once I hit the login, you can see that it is going to log in to our uh, Jenkins server. So I have already did some trial and error testing for our protractor test because I have to test this before I create a video though. So everything is running fine. Uh, I can quickly show you how the setup has been done. So before the setup has to be done with the GitLab, I will also show you how my GitLab looks like. So I'm just going to log into the GitLab, uh, maybe in the Chrome browser because I have this uh, credentials already uh, saved there. There you go. This is my profile. So I have already logged in and you can see we already have our project of protractor in here. So if I click that, you can see all my complete source code is already updated or uploaded within the uh, GitLab's account. So don't worry about it yet because the source code is currently uh, in my private repository. So this is not accessible by anybody outside world. So it is my own private repository. So I have already uploaded there so that it, nobody have access to it. And uh, I have already created the uh, API token so that you can do using uh, the profile. So you can see once I click this, there is an option called profile. So you can click this edit profile and here you can see there is something called as access tokens. So you can click that access tokens and here it will show you there is a new automation token that I have created. So this automation token is something uh, which is uh, what I have used to configure within our uh, uh, Jenkins here. So within Jenkins you can see there is something called as manage Jenkins and there is configure system. And here for the GitLab API token I have actually used this token that you are seeing over here right so i have already created that so creation is very very simple all you have to do is just give a name and expiration dates and then create a personal token it will create a token for you you can just copy paste that for your credential right so i'm going to show you quickly how these things has to be done so basically let's assume that you have a new jenkins and you have to install the gitlab plugins so first of all uh, you need to go to the manage jenkins and go to the manage plugins options and here within the available you need to search for GitLab uh, and then you can install it because I have already installed it is there in my install location so I can just show you that GitLabs uh, you can see there is a, a GitLab plugin so I have already installed that so this is the only thing that you need to install so once it is installed you can see that particular option something that you are seeing here while you do configuration so before doing the configuration, you also need to configure the credentials. So uh, for credentials, you can go over here and then go to the systems. And within the uh, global systems, here is the GitLab API token that I have already created. So uh, once I hit this edit, you can see I have pasted that GitLab token. So you have to select this uh, global Jenkins node item things, and then you can do that. Maybe I can also show you how to do that because if it is so much confusing, I can do that here. So protractor test token, and then this is going to expire uh, somewhere on September. And then I'm going to create a personal token. So once I create this, because I have to give the scope with full permission, and then I'm going to create it. And you can see that I have a token here. So I have copied that 
and then uh, I'm gonna go all the way here and I'm gonna add one more credential so this time I'm gonna give the git API token uh, and this is the same value that I have to give this is the token and the ID this time I'm gonna choose is the test token for protractor All right and then I'm gonna hit OK so this is the uh, token that I'm gonna use uh, test token right this is the one which I just created and I can delete the older one that we already have so I can just delete this right and then I can go back to the Jenkins and there is a manage Jenkins option and then I can go to the configure systems and here you have the GitLab's options enabled so I have just uh, created a new connection name and this is the gitlab.com slash exit automation which is nothing but the profile that I have got so if you go to your project uh, over here you can see it is actually gitlab.com slash exit automation right so this is the URL that I will be using in here for the GitLab host URL and for the credentials I'll be using this GitLab API token that I just created and then I'll be hitting apply and save that's it so this is the creation of the whole uh, API and giving connections access to the GitLab to the Jenkins so the final thing that we need to do is to start creating a freestyle project and run the test so what I'm gonna do is this uh, I'm assuming that you already have your application up and running so what I did is like our application is currently up and running and the web driver manager dot start is also up and running which is something but the web driver manager start that we do in our project right so that's up and running and the application is also up and running as you can see here the node.js application is up and running in here and uh, we can manually show you like how it's gonna run basically so if I go to my uh, uh, project here so this is exactly our same project that we were running before and now if I try to run this project so basically what happens is this is gonna launch our test as you can see here and the test has successfully completed running the uh, scenarios which is okay and there are some issues which is fine uh, and it says like the, uh, this is not an angular application and it is not invoking the reason is because I was running the test very fast and this issue is happening which is okay and you can see that uh, we have this error and this error happens because we did an unnecessary h222 so we just made a selector uh, which is kind of wrong so which is fine we just made this intentionally in our existing videos of this course right so the test is running so I'm gonna do exactly the same thing in here from the Jenkins this time so I'm gonna click this new item and then I'm gonna call this as protractor test demo or something like that and then I'm gonna select the freestyle and I'm gonna hit OK so that's gonna create a new project for me and then uh, you can see that the GitLab connection is currently GitLab connection this is the one that we created before and then I'm gonna go to the git so here is where I need to specify the application source code. So again, if you go to the GitLab uh, here for your project, so you can see there is an Excel automation project that we have. So this is my project that I just uploaded. So I need to specify this particular URL. So where to get this uh, URL, which is nothing but the GitLab's uh, Git repo URL, that you can see there is an option called SSH in here. You can change this to HTTPS and you can get this particular URL. So you can copy this and if you paste it over here, you can see it is exit automation slash protractor.git, right? This is a gitlab.com URL. And here for the credentials, you need to select this exit automations uh, uh, credential that we just created. Again, this credential is the credential that I use to log in within my GitLab. So I have not shown that in here because it's gonna be exactly the same credential that you use to log into that GitLab all right and this has automatically chosen the master branch which is okay and the final thing we need to do is to build a couple of commands like we need to run our npm server and then like we need to start uh, downloading the npm package and then we need to run the protractor test so I'm gonna choose the execute windows batch command and then here I'm gonna call a command called call npm install 
And if you remember in our IDE, we used to run the test using what is called as protractor uh, dot slash config in the test underscore uh, steps folder of our project. So this is how our framework has been designed as you remember, right? So that's exactly what I'm going to do in here as well. So I'm just going to call protractor test slash uh, steps or maybe I can give the slash in a Windows format slash config.js hit apply and hit save right so that's the only simple configuration that we need to do for our protractor test run so if I hit this build now you can see that basically it should uh, start running the test for us so let's go and see the console output you can see that somehow the Chrome browser has opened here it downloaded the code and it is running the test as well pretty fast and pretty cool so this is exactly the same error that we were seeing before right so now if I could see that there is an error happening in the home step.ts file in the line number 13 so if I go to my uh, GitLabs, so there is a very cool option in GitLabs that you can even modify the source code right from here. So if I go to the test and if I go to the uh, pages, so I guess it's happening in the home page. So you can see that we have a heading of H22. So I can just uh, web IDE so there is an option where you can edit the source code and you can commit the changes and you can see the same build happening which is really cool as well so let's give it a try and see what's going to happen so I'm just going to change this to h2 commit it and uh, I'm going to stage all and I'm going to say modified uh, h2 and commit it there you go so everything is cool and now if I go back to the Jenkins once again you know what Jenkins is going to do it's going to uh, get the latest source code and then it's going to compile and then it's going to run the test so let's see what's going to happen so basically I expect the test to pass at least or if not at least I don't see that specific error that I was getting before so you can see that it could get that particular latest commit and it is kind of running the test right now let's see what's going to happen there you go so that error is gone so this is different error now you can see that the h22 error is completely gone the reason is because we fixed that particular issue right so that's it guys this is how you can run the test using uh, Jenkins and GitLabs and protractor so in our next video I will show you what changes that we need to make to our existing framework a little bit so that we can run this particular test on our GitLabs because I made few changes on the source code side so that the test is actually running here so we'll be discussing about that in our next video and also I will be discussing how we can run this particular test and see how it looks like in a Jenkins pipeline and so that we can visualize that in the blue oceans uh, theme and we can see how beautiful it is so that's it guys once again thank you very much for watching this video meet you in our next video